All right, now it's time to apply what we learned about diagnosing the model, deciding what the problem is, coming out with a plan and implementing it. I am using the same example project that we were using in the previous exercise, which is with the CIFAR 10 data set. Um, the same settings apply right now. I haven't changed anything yet. Um, and I ran it without the learning rate uh, scheduling because as we found out, it didn't really work for us. So I'm still using a static um, learning rate, the default learning rate. We have, again, five layers with cellular activation function and lacun weight initializer and uh, alpha dropout in between the layers. Um, we are still using the gradient descent um, optimizer. And I am running it for 60 epochs with a batch size of 32. And just to remind you what we had for performance, the validation accuracy, we were able to get close to uh, 0 0.45. Well, actually, we had 0 0.45. And uh, training accuracy is around 0.4. And uh, it looks like we can keep learning. So there is no overfitting. It's going quite well. And for the test performance, we are also getting um, quite high. So, you know, things are looking up. Uh, but how to decide what to do from this point on? How can we decide based on a plan and based on logic what to do next to improve this model? So, if you remember, what we looked into was uh, the differences between performances. So let's take out the lesson summary notes because we have here some notes about uh, where we should look into. So we have the performance levels. We have the human level performance. So it's the, uh, the best performance a human can achieve doing this task. And I think it's quite high as a human. If we look at these images, we will be able to classify them quite correctly, I think. Maybe this one might be confusing. We're not really sure if it's a deer or a horse, uh, but I think generally we'll be able to do those tasks task much better than 0.5% accuracy or 0.5 accuracy out of one. Uh, so now we have the performance on our training set, the validation set, test set, and real life. So we do not really have a way of understanding real life performance of this data set because we're not using it anywhere but we can compare it in the first four levels. Uh, the performance difference between test set and validation set, if we look at it, let's say the validation accuracy is 0 0.44 and the test accuracy is again 0 0.44. So that's quite close. Uh, it means that we are able to capture a good amount of examples in validation set and test set and the model is generalizing well. Uh, the difference between training and validation set, let's check it out. The validation accuracy is 0 0.44, the training accuracy is 0 0.40. So actually our validation accuracy is even higher than the validation accuracy. So uh, we can't really say that there is any overfitting or that the training accuracy is uh, surpassing the validation accuracy or anything. Uh, what do we have left? The difference between performance on the training set and the human level performance. So. I think that's the problem here because we are not really able to get quite high yet. But at the same time, this uh, problem can really be done in a better way. So I guess what we're supposed to focus on here, right here, is the bias difference. If you see here, the, hum between, the difference between the human level performance and the performance on the training set is the bias difference. So we have to take some measures that are in here, these four options, to make our uh, performance better in this specific problem. But uh, let's do the implementations in the next video.